Hi everyone, welcome back for more Let's Play Professor Layton in the Diabolical Box. Okay, we're done in this area for the moment, so we go back here. Oh man, I am dog food! What's the matter, mister? What? Oh, hey! Okay, so I snuck into my uncle's room and I borrowed his camera, right? Thing is, I dropped it. I've been here trying to find all the pieces for like an hour, but I've only found one. That's quite a predicament. Yeah, and if word gets out about this wrecked camera, I'm going to get major flack from the boss man. Whoa, brain flash incoming. Dig this. I'm going to give you this busted hunk of junk. You do with it what you want. Just get rid of the thing, will ya? Okay, catch you on the flip side. What? Hey, come back here! The camera minigame has now been added to the trunk. And we got a squarish part. Use it to rebuild the camera in the professor's trunk. The camera icon has been added to the trunk. Reassemble the broken parts of the camera there. To access this minigame, touch the trunk icon, then the camera icon. And you know the drill. So let's take a look at it, shall we? We drag the parts from the bin on the top of the touchscreen into the camera to enlarge them. Once they're in the area, drag the selected part around to place it inside the camera's body. We can control the orientation and position of the parts within the camera by using the stylus. Touch the center of a part and drag it to move it around. Rotate the part by tapping its edge and dragging your stylus around. Fix the camera, gather all ten missing parts, and place them correctly so that no gaps remain. What happens when the camera is restored to working order? You'll just have to find out for yourself. And right now, this is how it'll work. And it wants it there, but sitting there is not such a good idea. But for now, we will just kind of leave it alone. Because we only have one out of the full ten parts. Once we get all ten parts, I will come back and we will actually assemble this camera. So anyway, now let's go back to the way we... Let's go... Let's start searching for Tom again. Obviously, he's not going to be in our room. I mean, we can take a look around, but no, he's not going to be there. There's one more minigame we will get. We will get that one later. So, no, he's not going to be here. We don't need to talk to Grumpy anymore. But, just in case, let's check the kitchen again. What's this? Something's fallen behind those boxes. It appears to be a cap of some sort, but I don't think I can reach it from here. Maybe the cat belongs to Tom. We certainly shouldn't rule out the possibility. Oh hey, since we're on the subject of caps, have you ever heard this one, Professor? Number 14. Red caps. Worth 25 points. A preschool teacher had everyone in her class close their eyes. While none were looking, she slipped caps onto their heads and then said, Okay, everyone, open your eyes and look at the hats of all your friends are wearing. Whoever sees four or more people wearing red hats gets a red balloon, and whoever doesn't gets a blue balloon. In a class of ten children, only some of the kids got a red balloon. Knowing this, how many kids went to home with a red balloon? Well, there's, the way you have to look at this, some of them did go home with the red balloon. So at least there are four hats out there with that red balloon. With There are at least four red hats out there. Because if there were only three, no one would have seen four hats. No one would have seen four red hats. And thus, nobody gets a red balloon. But, if we'd have had five red hats there, then everyone would have seen four. Even the people with red hats on, because there would be four left. So, there could only be four red hats, which means that four kids would only see three red hats. Thus, six kids went home with a red balloon.
This should do the trick. And there we have it. Exactly. Just one second, I'm about to sneeze. Or not. Rats! I was sure I could stump you with that one. Better luck next time, Luke. For now, we better return to searching for that lost little boy. Oh, right. Yep, better get back to that. Now that you mention it, how do you suppose Tom managed to worm his way into such a little space? Hmm, good question. And now we have Tom's hat to go along with Tom's shoe. Let's take a quick look here. Mm. Be right there. We have a shoe and the hat. Oh, we are done with that. I've got a sneeze that's on the border of coming. So if I get really quiet, that means I muted the mic and was able to stifle the sneeze or something. Well, let's head back towards the back of the car. The back of the train, I mean. Oh, let's see. Hey, this is open now. Let's take a look in here. That's Babette's room. Okay, which means more hint coins. Over here. And let's see. Yep, there's one. And now... Yep, those are the only two hint coins in here. Now, Luke, that's 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 uncalled for, really. Oh, take a look at this, Professor. It's food scraps, if I'm not mistaken. Do you suppose Tom wandered into the kitchen to grab something to eat? Well, it is possible. Though if that's the case, this child is certainly as lacking in the manners department. Hmm. Well, that's all we can really get out of here, unless you want to look around at all their other stuff. Sweet baby boy. How can she sleep at a time like this? I imagine she tired herself out, fretting over a child's disappearance. Come, Luke. The sooner we find the lad, the sooner we can put the poor lady at ease. But before we find the lad, puzzle. Wow, that flower vase looks like it cost a chunk of change. It's true, but lovely decorations really do wonders for a room. That's doubly true for flowers. Tell me, Luke, what do you think of flowers like these? Number 16, Crazy Daisies. Worth 15 points. Now for something on the flowery side. Of the three pictures labeled A, B, and C, one is actually the same as the picture on the left. However, the image on the far left has had its contents flipped left to right and its colors inverted and changed to black and white. Of A, B, and C, which one is the same as the black and white picture on the far left? Well, let's see. We've got a dot. That is the same color as the petals. So that rules out C pretty much immediately. So let's see if we can spot the picture here. Let's see, what's the difference between A and B? Well, if you look really, really closely, B has an extra dot right there. A doesn't, so we look over here and see if there's an extra dot. There isn't. So A is the mirror image of the negative picture there. Hmm, let's see if this works. That was almost too easy. Nice job. Not all puzzles will be such a breeze, but let's keep moving for now. So, we leave here, and then now, we can go back, we can keep going on towards the back of the car. Oh! Is everything alright, miss? 
I'm just fine, thank you. Excuse me. She looked familiar to anyone else. I mean, you know, like, really, really, really familiar. Say, does that lady seem kind of familiar to you? See? Even Luke agrees. Hmm, yes, now that you mention it, something about her did seem rather familiar. Oh well. Let's talk to her again. Maybe she saw Tom. Welcome aboard, sirs. May I interest you in a refreshing beverage or scrumptious snack? Sorry, miss, but right now we are busy searching for a small child. Have you seen a young boy wandering by himself around here? A little boy, huh? Nope, sorry, mister, but that doesn't ring any bells. Ooh, ooh, what happened? Did he get lost on the train? Yes. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to track down the missing tot. You know, I probably shouldn't spread rumors, but hey, I got nothing else to do. Did you know there's a weird old lady staying in this car? What if she kidnapped the little one and has him stowed away in her room? I know it's probably not true, but what if? She's just so bizarro, I can't help thinking that. But I could get in trouble for spreading rumors about patrons, so forget I said anything, okay? A strange older lady, huh? I wonder if we've seen her around. Your guess is as good as mine, Luke, but it certainly does make one wonder. Well, she's in this car, huh? Hello there, sunny boys. Ever get all knock-kneed and goose-bumpy from a terrifyingly hard puzzle? Well, have no fear. The beautiful and clairvoyant Granny Riddleton stands before you ready to help. I should have known. Who else could this tiny house belong to? Hey, wait a second. What are you doing here, anyway? So you've heard of me, eh? Shorty? Good to know I'm still a hit with the young'uns. Hee <laughs> hee. What do you mean? Of course I've heard of you. We met before, remember? Hmm, nope. I suspect you've got the wrong granny, boy. Never seen you before. But you're here now, so that means you want to hear my spiel, right? Hmm, not really. Oh, no need to be so modest. Allow me to thank you for visiting by bestowing my little tidbit of information on you. My specialty, you see, is puzzles. Puzzles people forget about? Puzzle people miss? Surely you boys have had a few of those, eh? No, no we haven't. No need to turn red, it happens to the best of puzzlers. What I do, you see, is I take those poor lost little puzzles and invite them to come stay with me. I imagine any puzzles you left behind have found their way into my hut as well, if you want to say hello. If my hut is empty, then you clever lads will just have to go out there and find some more puzzles. Now, why don't you take a peek inside the hut to see what's there? Except we know there's absolutely nothing there, so let's leave here before she gives us another spiel. And go back to the end of the train. And, the only thing in here worth looking at that we haven't looked at already, is the man in the jumpsuit, I guess. Oh, a passenger. Sorry, sir, I didn't mean to get in the way of you using the deck. You're not a passenger, too? Nah, I'm just a mechanic on this train. I ride along with her in case something goes funny. But as you might figure, she's as smooth as butter. Makes my job pretty easy. In fact, I got so much free time that I started making up puzzles. Want to take one for a test drive? Number 25, Surviving in the Wild. After years of bad business, a local zoo has finally run out of money to feed its animals. Bellies rumbling from days with no food, the animals make a plan to escape the zoo. After prying open the bars on their rusted cages, all the animals attempt to find their way through the maze-like walls of the zoo to the exit. Tap the picture of each animal you think will make it safely out of the zoo, then tap Submit to answer. Just remember, an animal shows its true colors in the wild. Now, let's use the memo function to actually see who can get out, because there are some of these creatures that are kind of trapped and cannot actually leave. Well, let's see. This way. Uh, 
Nope, no way out there. That's a dead end. That's a dead end. And so is that. The giraffe is not able to leave. This cat. Uh, nope, this cat is also trapped and cannot reach the exit up at the top. The gator. You know, the gator's linked with the panda and will probably eat the panda, so the panda is not going to be able to get out. But the gator itself is not going to be able to get out either. The panda and the gator are both blocked in tight. Yep, they're both trapped. But at least the gator will have a meal. Now that leaves us with the rabbit. Will the rabbit be able to get out at any point in time? Okay, the rabbit can get out. Can the lion? If the lion will get out and eat the rabbit. The only one left, the only one that can get out, is the lion. Because it'll eat the rabbit on its way out. So, there we go. And now, to test my theory. And there we have it. The only animal that will safely escape to freedom is the lion. Yep, exactly. Hey, what's the big idea? Don't you know it's hard to pass time with puzzles when you solve them that fast? Oh well, sorry to have spoiled your fun, dude, but it is time to cut the video now. When we return, we continue our search for Tom. So see you then, folks. Take care, all. Bye.